This is Real Time Business. I'm Gigi Stone Woods. Energy is a bright spot in an otherwise tempered M&A market. And for more on how this is playing out, I'm joined by Stephanie Chesnick, EY Strategy and Transactions Leader in the energy industry, and Bruce Ahn, EY Strategy and Transactions Principal. Stephanie, overall, the M&A market is slow to pick up. Why are you seeing more deals in the energy sector? The level of transaction activity that we're seeing as we go into 2024 is actually surpassing the levels that we saw in our previous peak in 2021. And this momentum continues to build. What has been very exciting for us and for our clients is the fact that it's not just, let's say, traditional energy companies making traditional energy investments, although we are seeing a lot of, of those types of transactions. It's also the fact that some of the new funding sources, like the Inflation Reduction Act, are supporting investments across a broad um, space of technologies and encouraging new investors. Because there's so much capital there. So much capital. And so it means that investors that haven't really thought about energy or the energy transition in the past are taking a step back and thinking, how can they participate? And speaking of this energy transition, Bruce, it's not just about energy companies trying to do that traditional transition to renewable energy, right? What else are you seeing? What we're finding is that energy transition is not just a light switch. You just can't go from fossil fuels one day, turn it off, and then all of a sudden you're all renewable. It's so going a little slower than people expected. Exactly. And so you're seeing this like play out with all these different sectors coming together to find the right solution. So you see oil and gas producers, for example, teaming and partnering up with a steel manufacturer to then take the carbon emissions and store that underground. Really interesting. So what other kinds of industries are you working with? Energy companies were clearly a first mover, but now we're seeing companies from a broad range of industries want to participate and partner those with energy companies to have the impact that they're looking to have. Um, for instance, we have an international client that is wanting to make an investment in the U.S. Their core area of expertise is manufacturing. And so now we've been helping them think through where is the best place for them to build a manufacturing facility that will make panels to support rooftop solar? We're helping them think through what are the nuances, not just from a federal level, but at a state and local level. What are the credits and incentives that are available to them? How do they negotiate those? And then we've been helping them to translate that into a financial model that they can use to action this investment and then ultimately to track the progress over time. I want to ask both of you, when you're speaking to companies trying to capitalize on all of the economic opportunities in the energy transformation space, what kind of advice do you give them? We really focus on two major themes. The first is understanding what you do really, really well, perhaps even better than your competitors and your peers, and then applying that what you do well to the adjacent energy transition solutions or new technologies. So for example, you have a oil and gas producer that's really good at extracting minerals. Well, now they're getting into electric vehicle battery production by extracting minerals from the earth like lithium. The second major theme that we focus on is where you invest your capital. This capital allocation decisions, where do you think you'll get the best return for your investment? So what kind of advice are you giving, Stephanie? It's very important that they help their stakeholders understand the timeline of those investments, what the risk return profile looks like so that they can be prepared um, as they work through that investment life cycle. Great advice from EY. But before we go, I do want to ask you, what about AI? It's the hot topic right now. How is it affecting the energy industry? Well, what, what's not commonly known is the energy industry is actually a very innovative sector. And so what we're seeing is it's the same adoption style with AI. So we're working with clients right now to figure out what are the use cases to apply AI to solve some of their most critical problems and solve some of their biggest issues. Absolutely. Anytime you're talking about a very asset intensive industry, like energy is both on the oil and gas side, um, power and utilities, as well as in mining and metals. And so using um, AI to um, enhance predictive uh, maintenance, having AI help around um, predictive power generation and forecasting, all of that can have meaningful impacts on our clients' businesses at the end of the day. Thanks for joining us, Bruce and Stephanie. You've been watching Real Time Business. Mm -hmm.